Just drop that which is useless in your hands and walk away, suggested Quan sarcastically. He knew full well that Chiomo's honor would dictate that he fight to the death. Chiomo was insulted by this remark. He was also furious that even with the amount of chemicals that he had taken to enhance his speed, his opponent was still much faster than he was. He launched into a furious pattern of spinning sword slashes. You die now, he bellowed as he rotated and his vampiric Sentra Katana streaked through the air. Quan had deliberately antagonized Chiomo to induce such an attack. He watched keenly while stepping back as Chiomo continued his swirling advance forward, waiting for his opportunity. A loud crystalline on metallic cling was heard around the entire arena. It was not the sound of the samurai sword on Quan Tai's armor as Chiomo had hoped. Rather it was Quan Tai's pronounced and hefty strike on Chiomo's blade with both of his. He had utilized the full force of his muscular shoulders and arms in the blow which wrenched the weapon from the hands of the younger combatant. It flew, end over end, across the arena until it landed with a loud report on the deep purple tiling. Chiomo was aghast. His primary weapon lay on the dark, uneven surface some eight meters away. He was fighting the greatest known samurai in the world, and he was losing. Draw that useless wakizashi or retrieve the katana, thought Chiomo as he jumped and dived to avoid most of Quan Tai's follow-up attacks. One slash ran up the inside of his right leg and onto the breastplate. These were only grazes, however, and although they melted deep groves where they had brushed along the plated suit, they had not found flesh. Chiomo knew that if he could not regain the initiative quickly, that it would be then end for him. Chiomo was using every facet of acrobatic prowess that he possessed to dodge and weave through the warming hurricane of sword strikes that oscillated from the hands of his enemy. Not much further now. He sustained a couple of additional grazes and one significant burning slash wound on the shin while he was inverted in a roll. He cried out in agony as his grieve melted, along with some of his flesh and shin bone which formed a hideous cooling slag on his lower left leg. It did not slow him down though, and eventually his spiraling path over the hostile ground led him to a position where his hand was on the hilt of his favorite weapon once more. Giomo could barely tolerate the pain from his serious wound that was beginning to filter into his consciousness. The time for desperate action had come, and he knew it. These were his thoughts. Tai can counter every sword-based attack I attempt, he either knows which technique I'm about to execute, or he reacts quickly enough to compensate for my every move. Giomo sustained another penetrating graze across his chest, as he spun in preparation for what appeared to be an overhead sword strike. The wide line of scorching agony, an unpleasant smell of melted flesh and burnt hair only reinforced Giomo's resolve to complete his planned attack. Quan Tai was becoming complacent. Despite his obvious superiority with edged weapons, the Grandmaster moved three paces back to avoid what was looking increasingly like a clumsy and ineffective attacking swing. Quan Tai resolved that it would be his last. Instead of attempting to strike Grandmaster Tai with his Sentra Katana directly, he thrust its point into the grate between the tiles and launching himself off the hilt and pommel, kicked with his unwounded leg at blinding speed. Quan Tai was caught completely off guard by this unconventional tactic and received the solid kick squarely on his chest, knocking him to the ground. There was no time to hesitate. Jomo feverishly reefed the sword from the blood-filled channel and thrust it downward at the legendary samurai master. He realized that his opponent would roll quickly away, and that if he anticipated incorrectly which direction he would decide to take, that his advantage would be lost. He had only a split second to consider. Left, right, or forward for a backward roll. Left. For a moment it seemed like Quan was moving right. Jomo would not have been able to react fast enough to strike him, but Quan Tai was only attempting to feign, and his path brought him under his downward stabbing katana, which intercepted with and pierced through the back of Quan Tai's Herculean armor with surprising ease. The blow penetrated the Grandmaster's left lung from behind. Blood frothed up from inside him and gurgled through his nose and mouth. As he fell forward, Quan Tai spent his final few last breaths to hiss curses at his killer. This was cut short by the vigorous twisting of the vampiric katana that followed, accompanied by the waterfall of blood and churned up organs that created a red pool from the inverted blade's rearward blood vents. The crowd was going wild with excitement during the entire fight. To Chiomo, this had seemed like a dull background roar, such was his level of concentration. He noticed the furious cheering as he slumped to one knee. He was in incredible pain, 
and had a few scars inflicted upon him that could not even be healed with magic. Such was the power of Elsith's forge, but he was champion. Quantai's corpse was taken directly from the central arena to the Chamber of Pools.